in this case? Chain, chain rule. Chain rule. In our specific case, this would be, general you can say chain, chain rule, that's fine. This would also be called the general power rule. Do you see it? General power rule. And then you would do the quotient rule. Then general power rule. And then general power rule inside of that. Yeah. Okay, that would be nasty. <laughs> One way that you could make this easier if you're looking at it, uh, you could take both the, this exponent and say, okay, this is now to the tenth, and that's to the fifth. That might make it actually a little bit easier. But starting out, you would see the general, this, I'm just making a point here, you'd see the general power rule first. Do you see what I'm talking about? You see the product rule first here. It encompasses the whole problem. And that's how you diagnose these things. What do you do first? Whatever's encompassing the whole problem. And then you work your way inside and you follow the DDX and the DDX will tell you what to do. Are you ready to do this problem? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So first thing we see, okay, connecting this thing is a multiplication. That means a product rule, set up the product rule. Go for it. This one? The cube root of that is going to stay in with that function. Just do the product rule right now, and we'll talk about the next part later. Just do the product rule and set it up. Don't take the derivatives yet, just set up the product rule. Okay, set up the product rule. I want you to take no, don't do the derivative, just set up the product rule. The product rule should say the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Did you all, were you all able to do that? So this is what I mean by that. The derivative, the derivative of the first times the second. Is that the second? No. Okay. That's the second. Yes. That three has to tag along with that piece if you're going to do the product rule. Raise your hand if you got that far, so far. Okay, good deal. You have the exponent, right? Then you do a plus, and you do derivative of the first times second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Do you? Yes. For us, here's what it said. This was the first function in x, and this was the second function in x. It was being multiplied, right? So you have to take those two, just those two pieces. That's what you were doing here. I'm kind of crooked, aren't I? I'm always like that, I think. How many people feel all right with this so far? I'll try to be more straight on the next one. Now you follow the DDX and you just do what it tells you to do, because that's your calculus. So we just take derivatives piece by piece as they appear. So piece by piece as they appear says, can you take the derivative of this thing right there? Yes. That's actually quite an easy one. What's the derivative of that? Two. So this says, all right, 2. Do I take the derivative of that? Heavens no. No, it has no ddx. Do I take the derivative of this? So I just write it. And now we get down to this piece. Notice how it's basically the product rule lets you break it up as problems within problems within problems. None of it's going to get any harder than this. It's just you might have more rules encompassing it. So if you can follow the rules down, you know the three rules, uh, the chain rule, quotient rule, product rule. You know how to go from the outside inside. Just follow your DDX. You'll be okay. Now, that's easier said than done. All right? I know some of these problems are very tasking. But if you can do that, that's the fundamentals here. You look from the outside inside, start with the big rules, and follow the DDX. And then use rules within rules within rules. So on this one, we look at this and you say, can I do that piece, that derivative? It's basically a problem within a problem. What's the derivative of x squared minus 5 to the third? What rule do you need for that? Chain rule or the corollary to that because it's a specific version of the chain rule is called the what? General power rule. So this was a product rule and inside of that had a general power rule. General power rule says, well, what I'm going to do is, so for this piece, for this piece, what do I do? So notice I'm here right now. I bring down the three, very good. What do I have next, please? Good, I don't change that inside. I don't change that to the what exponent? Oh, don't forget that. And then I'm done, right? Ah, okay. Times the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule. That is the general power rule. Times the derivative. And I want you to write it out. I want to see this. I don't want you doing the math in your head right now. We're just learning. We're just barely learning it. 
Okay, I know that eventually some of you are going to be able to just do these in your head. In this class for right now, wait till you get to 4B to do that. For right now, I want to see your work that way. If you make a mistake, I'm not saying you will, but if you do, I want to see where that's happening. Do you get me? Do you get me? Show me those steps. Okay, uh, times the derivative of x squared minus 5. Remember that we're multiplying here. Are there any other ddx's to take care of? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, I hope so. Yes, we do. We have a ddx. What's the derivative of this little piece? So if you follow that ddx down, that tells you where to take the derivative of, or what to take the derivative of. So we're basically all done up until that point. We have 2 x squared minus 5 to the third. Let's not mess up any exponents. 2x minus 3 times 3 x squared minus 5 to the second times, what is the derivative of that little piece? Two. Notice how we kind of eliminated some of the bigger rules, right? We used the product rule that helped us down to just have one more rule left. We had a general power rule. Now we have just a very simple power rule. And we're good to go. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Your calculus is over with. Now we're going to make it prettier by using a little bit of algebra, and you're going to see something that happens often when you have a product rule that involves a general power rule. You're going to see some pieces that keep reappearing. See how that thing appeared again with our product rule? Because you had the original, and then you took a general power rule where that piece shows up again. A lot of times that happens when you do the product rule and you have a general power rule. You're going to want to factor that at the end. It makes things a lot nicer. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go ahead and maybe make this just a little bit prettier, we have this. This becomes 6x. Like that. Are you okay with that so far? Yes, no? Do you see the factorization of what I'm talking about? We have this, this big factor and this big factor right there. We can pull out, what can we pull out of that? If I pull out the x squared minus 5 squared, what I end with is 2, 2 still there, x squared minus 5 to what power? Good, because I pull out two of those things. Does that make sense to you? plus 6x, 2x minus 3. Are there, are there any of these left? No. I've factored that out. Notice you could get the same thing if you distributed. This distributes and give you this. This distributes and give you that. Okay, so that, that's factorization right there. We should have to that so far. The next thing you do, distribute this in combined like terms. If you distribute this in combined like terms, you'll have a much simpler looking polynomial. So in here we get our 2x squared minus 10, we get our 12x squared minus 18x, <coughs> if I did it right, did I do it right? Yeah. If we combine some of those like terms, I'm seeing 14x squared. I'm seeing minus 18x, minus 10. Now, hopefully it's not just me, but this thing looks a whole lot more concise than that thing. Does it not? It looks, it looks prettier, it looks better, it looks more concise, more wrapped up. And that's where we want to end our derivatives if we can make it that far. Show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we've, we've done so far? At least up to the calculus being done part. Are you okay with the calculus being done part? After that, it's just algebra, some manipulation. That's okay. We can do that. By the way, this is the part where people lose track in this class what you're actually doing, okay? They just get to the, they go, oh yeah, general power rule and product rule and push rule, chain rule. They lose track of what you're doing. What did we just do? We found the what? Slope. So, that's all we're doing, it's find the slope. This is the slope. 
this is the formula for the slope of that curve at any point that I want. So could I still find the equation of a tangent line at a point? Sure. I'd plug in the x coordinate to here to find my slope. I'd plug my x coordinate into here to find my point. Then use y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And that's all we're doing. Okay, we're finding slope. Or if this is a position curve, we're finding velocity or rate of change. Or if it's cost function, we're finding uh, marginal cost, marginal profit, things like that. Very interesting stuff. Let's try a few more. I need to show you how the, uh, the chain rule is going to affect something to do with the, like a trig function. And that will probably be about our day. Does the chain rule still apply? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Do I have a function within a function, basically, is what you're asking? Because if, if you do, then you have a chain rule. Do I have a general power rule here? Yeah. Oh, explain that. Explain how I have a general power rule, because I don't see an exponent right now. So in order to do this, well, hopefully you remember this from the last couple of sections. In order to do the, the derivative, you really need to represent roots as exponents, right? Because we know we, we deal with that. We subtract one from them. You can't subtract one from a square root unless you write it as a one half. So first thing to do is go, yeah, all right, I know that this is 5x squared minus 1 in parentheses to the one half power. And that right there says, aha, aha, look, if you can cover it up, you're talking about a composition. Uh, within, within parentheses, you're talking about a composition. That means chain rule applies. In this case, it's an exponent, so the general power rule applies. Why don't you go ahead and try it? Go for it. You're, you're at that point at this, at this stage. Remember, I really don't want you doing the work all in your head. I want to see the steps right now. I want to see the DDX written out. Did you make it that far? 1 half 5x squared minus 1 to the negative 1 half? Cool, inside doesn't change for now. And then we take the derivative of the function itself, the inside function of our composition, or the piece of our composition. If we take that derivative, then we're just about done. Did you get the 10x too? We got exactly that on our paper. Good for you. Now make it a little prettier. Here's how you can make it a little prettier. The one half and the ten that simplifies. That simplifies and gives you five. So we have five x, and then we have this five x squared minus one to the negative one half. How you can write that appropriately would be, since you started as a square root, you probably want to end with some sort of root. We want five x on the numerator. Five x on the numerator. Five x squared minus one and a square root on the denominator. Do you see where, why it's on the denominator firstly? Because mm -hmm. that negative one half that moves to the denominator.